Hello everyone, in this video I am going to show you all how I made this powerful fully automatic Wi-Fi router UPS with dual DC output for router and modem. For this UPS, I am going to use the 2500mAh18650 lithium ion battery. Lithium ion batteries can catch fire or explode if not properly handled. Instead, you can use lithium ferrophosphate battery, which is more safer than a lithium ion batteries. Before installing the battery, we need to make sure if each cell is at the same voltage level. Since I don't have the battery spot welder, I am going to use the 18650 battery holders for 2P ORS battery pack. To mount these two holders, I am using 2mm acrylic sheet. The holder itself having markings for the series connections to mount the batteries. First I soldered the 2P parallel wire connection. I used the double tape to stick the acrylic sheet with the battery holder. Before soldering these two holders, I have installed the batteries at the bottom holder. I am using the PCB standoffs to join these two holders. We can connect the BMS after soldering the battery connections. Make sure you follow the proper connection. Any wrong connection could damage the cell and make it explode. Battery should not fit over tight inside the holder. If it is over tight, then it could possibly damage your battery. So make sure to use the high quality battery holder. Before connecting the BMS, now let's check the battery voltage. I have connected the balanced connector first and soldered the B plus and B minus. While measuring the BMS output voltage, it shows only 10V, but the series connection output is 15 volt. So initially to turn on the BMS, you need to charge at once. I set 16.8V and 0.5A in my DIY bench power supply and connected it to the BMS for few seconds. And I measured the BMS output voltage with multimeter. Now it shows 15V. I am using XT60 female connector at the battery output. Now the 4S battery pack is ready. To test the BMS, I am going to charge the battery using my DIY bench power supply. I set voltage to 16.8V and 0.5A current. After fully charging, now each cell adds its maximum voltage of 4.2V. I 
I am going to use this XH604 charge controller module to turn on the battery charging when the battery voltage goes below the particular range and turn off the charging when it reaches the full charge voltage. To test this module, I am going to simulate the battery by using my DIY bench power supply. I connected the battery power supply output at the battery terminal in the module. Long press the low set to set the charging voltage. Long press high to set the charging stop voltage. I set the charging start voltage at 16.2 volt and stop voltage as 16.8 volt. I slowly reduce the voltage to 16.2 volt and relay in the module turns on at 16.1 volt. Now I slowly increase the charging voltage to 16.8 volt. Even at 16.9 volt, the relay doesn't turn off. It turns off only at 16.98 volt. So I set the charging stop voltage as 16.7 volt, so it can turn off at 16.8 volt. I am going to use the Morrison 24 volt 32 amp SMPS. Make sure you use the branded power supply like Morrison Meanwell since the SMPS is going to turn down in 24 into 7. I am going to use the 3mm acrylic sheet for the case. To measure the size, I placed the component in the sheet and made the markings for cutting the acrylic sheet. After cutting the acrylic sheet, I mark the points for drilling the holes to hold all these components in the case. Except the battery, for other components, I am using the thread insert. Using the soldering iron, I heated and inserted this thread insert into the acrylic sheet. I applied the epoxy glue over the thread insert to increase the bonding strength. I am going to use this small fan for ventilation. Added the slide switch to turn on and turn off the fan. I made some marking on the other side to drill the hole for airflow inside the case. Place the acrylic sheet into the 90 degree corner joint holders. I applied the drop of glue into the corners. I also applied the epoxy resin over the corner to increase the bonding strength. Similarly, I did the same for bottom sheet.
For holding the top cover, I am using the same thread insert. I glued it over the corners and applied some epoxy resin to increase the bonding strength. Now the case is ready. The only thing left was I have to drill the hole on the top covers for inserting these screws. I took two wooden pieces to increase the strength at the back side of the acrylic sheet for wall mounting. I have already drilled some hole in it to mount with the back side of case. And I made some keyhole in acrylic sheet for wall mounting. After completing the chassis, now let's insert the component one by one as per the block diagram. Please note, this is not the final vision. I will make more changes to it after testing it for a few weeks. So please stay tuned for the part 2 video. I will upload the final circuit diagram in my part 2 video. Connected the face and neutral terminal. I am going to use the fuse holder at the 24 volt output from the SMPS for additional protection. Place the 5 amp fuse in the both 24 volt output and 230 volt AC input. After connecting the input to the battery charging module, I turned on the power supply to adjust the charging voltage. I set the voltage to 16.8 volt by adjusting the trim pot in the module. And to set the charging current, you need to short circuit the output of the module with the jumper wire and adjust the trim pot to set the charging current to 1 amp. I connected the output of charging module to the input of charging controller module. I am going to use this 5V relay module to turn off the charge controller when there is no power or when the modem is running with battery power because the charge on of controller module uses the power from battery to work. To reduce the 24V to 5V, I am using this small buck converter module. Before soldering the buck converter to the relay module, I set the output voltage to 5V and I soldered the buck converter with the relay module. and covered it with the heat shrink tube. Then I connected the buck converter input to the 24 volt output. I am using this 5 amp high current buck converter to reduce the 24 volt to 16 volt so there will be less difference between the battery output voltage and the live power output. I am using this shorty barrier diode to prevent the reverse current flow. Then I connected the output of buck converter to the power of protection relay module. Similarly, I made the another wire with Scotty barrier diode for connecting it to the battery output. Main operation of this power of protection relay module is to change the input to battery when the main power is off. When the power came back, it has to connect to with main power. There will be some time delay while switching from battery to main power, so we will find out this during the testing. I connected the two buck converter at the output of power of relay module, one for Wi-Fi router and one for modem. I have already set the buck converter output to the required voltage. 
I have connected the 5 amp fuse and on off switch with the XT60 male connector. I connected the positive terminal of battery to the relay module and relay module to the charge controller and negative terminal from battery to the charge controller. Now only the fan connection is pending. I am using the buck converter to control the fan. I am going to run the fan only with 50% of power. So I already set the voltage to 6 volt for the fan. I measure the buck converter outputs and 6 volt for fan, 9 volt for router and 12 volt for modem. Now let's connect the battery. I have added the kept on tape to insulate the holder terminals. I place the battery carefully and secured with screws. and connected the battery to the UPS with XT60 connector. Now the UPS is ready for testing. Before getting into the testing, now let's see how it actually works. When the main power is on, 24V from SMPS is converted into 16V by the buck converter and it goes to the power of protection relay which will turn on its relay and switch to the main power. So the 16V will flow to the another buck converter at the output side and it will convert it to 12V for modem and 9V for router. Parallelly the 24V will be converted into 5V and turn on the 5V relay which will connect the battery to the charge on off controller and the charge controller will charge the battery only if the voltage is below the set voltage of 16.2 volt and will turn off the charging when it reaches 16.8 volt. When the power goes off, 5 volt relay will disconnect the battery from charging controller and the power of protection relay will switch to the battery to power the router and the modem. For safety, I have added one 5 amp fuse at the SMPS output and another 5 amp fuse at the battery output. Also, the BMS has overcharge and over discharge and short circuit protection. Additionally, the charge on off controller will also prevent the battery from over charge. I am going to use my DIY LED ring light for initial testing with 12V and 2A of load. I turned off the main power supply, it automatically switched to the battery power. Problem and while switching there was a 15 milliseconds of delay which will make your router to restart. When I turn on the main power, there wasn't any delay. I turned on the main power after draining the battery up to 50% and the battery starts charging. Now the problem too. When power goes off while battery is charging, there was the reverse current flow from battery to other components. This happens only if power goes off while the battery is charging. Problem 3. When the battery is fully charged, the charging module relay has to disconnect the charging process. Instead, it's stuck in a loop which tripping the relay continuously. This happens because of the reverse current flow. This is not the final version of my UPS. I will upload my final version after the intensive testing for few weeks. I will upload the part 2 video after 7 days of releasing this video. In part 2, I will address all issues and how I solved it. I will also upload my final circuit diagram and I will show my full router setup in part 2 video. So please subscribe and click the bell icon to get notified.